hi guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of don't be telling my business why are you telling my business because i can't can and i can't can i can't can i can't can and i can't can i can't can and i will <laughs> i am still still trying to get it together and we just have to do what we can do because you know our stories over here are definitely scandalous and they're marvelous and i come to give you my spin on things because you seem to like it okay so i'm doing what i can make it do what it do y'all I am getting there. I am not all the way there, but I am on antibiotics now. So that is a good thing. Maybe we can kill the parasites that are in me. All right. But we're going to do what it make it do. And we're going to tell you about a little story about Jasmine, the Jasmine brand over there. And Carlos King getting together, pumping out the hitters for season 14. These six ladies and maybe a possible seventh later lady. We don't know. It could be Marietta Shaw, Candy Burris' friend. She seems to be bringing everybody and their grandmama over here for a starlight or a cameo or a friend of the show type of situation. And I guess we might well be here for it because they pretty much let her do what she wants to do. She ain't doing anything over there. They like Candy. And Candy's going to ride this train. Uh, come on, ride that train. Gonna ride it up. Come on, ride that train. That you choo train. Y'all remember that song? I probably ain't got it all right, but y'all know where I'm going with it, okay? Um, but, uh, yeah, Candy bringing people over, and they're trying to show and prove. Um, we had got that little saying, or we had got that little piece of information that um, Angela Simmons was trying to do her thing, but, you know, it didn't work out. She was on another show, which I understand why she on that kitty bopper show. Um with by a while but it is what it is you know you sign them contracts you got to be able to definitely uh pay attention to them and follow them to the letter so she won't be on this season but they were saying moyetta shaw which is neo's past girlfriend might be on it but we'll see we'll keep our eyes open for that but this uh these are the cast members um i'm missing marlo somewhere but anyway she's around here somewhere but they're out and about taping and doing this here things and stuff yeah that's all six of them right there so uh, yeah that's what we're working with but i'm gonna tell you a little tea we're gonna read a little of uh the jasmine brand's article that she did with carlos king and him saying it's gonna be a fabulous exciting new season 14 for the real housewives of atlanta and he can't wait to have us see it even though he's not producing in it or anything like that but he had his ears to the street and they're saying like it's going to be a little powwow type of uh, season for the real housewives of Atlanta more like a comeback type uh, situation because we know they have been treading water for a very long time uh, but it just is what it is they need to get some players on there that's coming to play and, and, and not just be uh oh what do you call it a rock and a pun or whatever uh but i just tried to figure some things out because i just kept seeing drusa doors pictures and then i kept seeing or it was making me think of portia williams and i'm like wait a minute now they got this girl looking like a clone of portia williams i'm like portia girl honey baby is it some underwriting news or little fine writing that you may have an option to come back? Um, because this young lady look like she gonna take your whole essence and embody your look on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And even though it may not be you on them, it's gonna make us think of you. Because this girl has taken some of your wig looks, your color of your hair hairstyles and some of your dressing motif child i don't know they might be replacing you all together meaning you won't be back 
and they'll just use Drusadora as your stand-in until they can place Drusadora. Because if she don't come with it this season, you know how we get. We ungrateful. We start saying, uh, you're not really entertaining us. We damn sure don't want to see no more marriage troubles. Don't want to see your mama of him making fun of Ralph or Ralph making fun of her. You know, we just, we ain't here for the men. You know, we're really not here for the men. We're here for the women. And, you know, if you want to show us some um, uh, cheating scandals are going on, you getting into it with your husband, okay, we're here for that. Um, that kind of um, drama or um, dramatization, I should say, whether it's scripted or not scripted. But um, we need some things to spark up. And with you looking like baby Portia, I'm telling you, because you know that whole mannerism, I think Portia did that shit. Also, with the ring thing, the whole, uh, I don't know, it's its giving me something. And I think Portia had a henny, a henna type tattoo too. So, I'm like, it's Portia. Girl, are they trying to replace you on the Real Housewives of Atlanta? For sure. Okay, we know you did what you had to do. And it's unexcusable. And it is on the verge of insubordination so um yeah if you don't make it back we can see your replacement we can see your replacement right there i mean am i tripping family or is it seems like they're trying to double portion up with the look of her but replacing her with your store so she really can't come back so she really think she got something you know locked and sold up because they ain't letting Portia come back. So she's going to assume uh, Portia's look. Embody her mannerisms. And uh, really make us forget about her. But we can't when you're sitting up there looking like her. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying fam. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. But it just seems like they trying to replace Portia all together. And little did they know. Because we hadn't even really seen Portia's uh, show yet. It hadn't come into fruition. But Drew was already being on the show. And she kind of had some of Portia looks. I ain't saying nothing about it. Because I said well, maybe she's just trying to fit in. And maybe she's um, buying some wigs or, or or some lace fronts from Portia's uh, collection. And so that's money in Portia's bag. So ain't no sense of stopping somebody hustle, you know. So, you know, and they already had. So I think Kenya had picked at her one time about she needed somebody to style her hair. So it just is what it is. But let's go on and get into this uh, exclusive interview that the Jasmine brand did with Carlos King. Okay, it is titled uh, Executive or Exclusive. Producer Carlos King says upcoming season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta may be one of the best seasons. And this was written by Monique Nicole uh, on the 28th, which I think is today if i'm not mistaken but anyway um i guess she did the interview with her or she did the article not the interview per se i think jasmine uh did that interview with carlos king but you know he's up and he's saying the show um for the upcoming season season 14 is gonna be a blast it's gonna be real good um King also revealed his excitement for the upcoming season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, the self-proclaimed king of reality TV. He produced eight seasons of the hit Bravo show. Since then, Carlos King went on his own. He went over to the OWN Network, which is Oprah Winfrey's network. And uh, he's produced a reality show called Love and Marriage Huntsville which is quickly becoming the highest rated unscripted show on the own network since 2019. I never had got a chance to look at it. I don't really want to go look at it, but my brother looks at it. He said it's pretty good. I should do some um, reviews on it, but I just ain't got around to it per se. Okay. Um, Carlos King is really raving about Marlo Hampton, and he's very, very glad she had uh finally solidified herself a peach on the show uh he goes on to say one thing i'm hearing about uh the new cast members is they're bringing it which is great you got marlo hampton who has a peach which i think is a great idea and i'm really looking forward to this new season and i'm like i'm hoping 
just me looking in on everything Marlo was bringing it as a friend I think she may feel pressure on her to try to do uh, exceedingly well uh, for her for it being her first season as a solidified peach holder and I think she's going to be trying to gun uh, press the gas too hard until she can finally get her swing on things because I really think she's definitely going to go hard with battling it with Kenya but I hope she just choose pick and choose her battles wisely because like I said Kenya always come to play chess she don't play checkers and we really haven't found um Marlo's style of playing the game on reality TV show to keep her as one of the A-listers favorite uh, reality celebs to view and, and tune into and want to watch and definitely try to become a household name in her own right by being a peach holder but um it remains to be seen like I said because she's always come in and battled Kenya from a friend standpoint but she's in a different avenue she's in a different lane and she's in a different format now so she is one of the ladies that hold a peach so she's definitely definitely gonna have to show us her style show us what she's working with and go in and do battle okay because like I said there's nobody there to do battle now Kenya is the reigning one who knows how to throw shade, who knows how to twirl, and to, and knows how to keep up a, a commotion where she spins out of control and she blasts everybody in sight. And when you try to come for her, you better come with the big guns because she comes with all heavy artillery that we haven't even seen or even know of that was in existence. Because when she comes, she comes ready, lock loaded, and ready to spray. And if she's using heavy artillery, like say you come up here with a uh, Uzi, she gonna come out with a um, sawed off shotgun laced with a machete, and then gonna have a cannon to blow your behind away. <laughs> okay, cause she don't fight fair. When she when you step in the ring with her, you know it's come hard or go home. And if you don't come hard. She just going to just mow all over you and let the dust settle. And she's going to be fanning and, and, and waving her smoke from her Colt 45. Like, I told y'all I didn't come to play with y'all. Y'all going to summon me. And when I do decide to show up, because you don't summon me. But if you do and I decide to answer, just know I'm coming for you. And don't go hiding nowhere. I ain't going to make the plan feel fair. I am going to throw out everything and the kitchen sink at your behind. And that's just how she gets down. And that's why everybody loves her. And I've come to love her. Because at first I'm like, why she got to be so hard? Why she got to be so extra? But then I learned her by watching her on the show. And trying to find out what her MO is about. And she's definitely always keeps it fine tuned. And she be ready to go. She be ready to rock. Okay. So I ain't got nothing to say about her ever again. About her tactics and how she get down. Now one thing I can say. We ain't going for nobody's parents. And all that stuff. And nobody's kids. But if you in the field. You on the team. Your castmate. You try to do wrong. Then fair game. Love and war. That's all it is. But going back to uh, Carlos King and what he was trying to say when he was interviewing with Jasmine Brand, he was saying, you know, he think everybody's doing a fabulous job. He really feels that the season is going to be taken off like firecrackers, like fireworks. And those are my interpretations. I just didn't like some of the wording that they were using. It kind of seemed kind of regurgitated and talked about a lot anyway. So you know how Mama Deb gets down over here. Auntie Deb, Cousin Deb, Grandma Deb, Sister Deb. However you see me. When you're over at the house, we have conversations over here. Alright? 
You say your conversation, I say mine. Sometimes we do agree. The majority of the time we do agree. But then we may have to disagree and we may be indifferent with each other. But we're going to always stay respectful. Now, we do have some family members that come over here and say crazy shit like, I ain't going to subscribe to you. You talk too much. This, that, and the third. Well... You got some family members like that. You know what I'm saying? They want to be seen. They feel out of place. So they got to make ruckus. And what we do to those people, those family members, sometimes we annoy them because we know they don't know no better. And then sometimes when they troublemakers, and you know they troublemakers, we got to just cut the head off the snake. Meaning we got to cut the head off the relative. Put them in their place. Let them know, baby, you either going to come correct, come with a conversation, come with another viewpoint, be respectful, or you got to get the hell on out of here. Okay? And you can come back when you're ready to apologize and you're ready to sit there and act like you got some sense, some decent conversation, and, and don't be trying to spoil it for the rest of us. Then we'll let you back in with open arms. You know, we, we, we'll, we, you know, we'll forget it. But you only have a couple of times to do that. Then we have to be like, we love you from afar. I can't deal with you. You're in my peace. You're in my inner peace. You're in the sanctuary where I need my peace. I need to be around like-minded, logical, reasoning folks. And I don't mind getting checked, you know, because I ain't always right. You know what I'm saying? But 99% nine, nine, nine of the time, I am right. I am right. I'm in my own truth, so I can't be but right. You know, my truth may not be your truth. But we damn sure going to be respectful over him because it's my house. You know what I'm saying? I run my house. And I, I know people got their opinions, but I'm just saying express it nicely. Because if you can't, then you go to Block Island, and I never will see you again. Mm -hmm. And if you keep coming back on the suit on names, see, one thing about that, people keep coming back. When they get blocked on people's channels and, and th things of that nature. But they ain't smart enough to try to switch up their M.O. And talk like they got some sense. When they start going sideways. Start saying crazy shit. That get you to blocking. And believe me, YouTubers, content creators, they don't get tired of blocking you. That's just like pushing a key, a, 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 a button on the keyboard. It's nothing to us. But it might be something to you because you might miss out on some good laughs, some good fun, some good hugs and kisses, and some good nuggets. So I said that to say this. Chill. Chill in my house, okay? All is welcome. All walks of life, all races, all creeds, all colors. Okay, all genders, you know, don't care over him. We love, we like love. We put love on everybody, you know what I'm saying? But when somebody is acting foul out there, it's our duty to call them. It's not like we trying to not be nice to our own race or our own group of women. And It ain't that. It's just like, let's have some morality. Let's have some actors. Let's have, we can build you down. We can tear you down to build you back up. Because sometimes that's what you need. You need to be refined. You need to be, you know, um, dipped into some more. Uh, like you don't tarnish so we need to keep refining you like pottery or clay you find a little hints and nicks and nats and you just have to keep kneading you got to keep kneading until it gets back smooth get back smooth and you put that polish on it you see what I'm saying because we all got rough spots but it's called maturity it's called growth it's called learning from your experiences not looking back but moving forward okay and for the ones that can't forgive you or keep bringing up your past you got to slide them to the side Okay, because you don't repent it, you don't do what you had to do, and you got to make things be anew. All right, that's all I'm saying. But we're gonna get on back to this story. I just had to let that out for the people in the back that keep trying to act up, or they be on the porch ringing and they wonder why they can't get in. Okay, we got to remind them of their infractions. You know, see what I'm saying? We don't let people slide over here. We check you because we want you to learn. We want you to know that this is, wasn't a good look. Don't do that no more. We got to know. Got to let them know. When you do an action that's negative, there's consequences. We don't brush stuff on the rug over here. We deal with it. We talk about it. We talk about it. We talk about it. And we move on. Okay? And if you got to get left because you ain't understanding the conversation, then that's just where it has to be. Okay, because we got too much to talk about. Too much to just, you know, kiki and laugh about. So, 
Oh, where was I? Uh, okay, and then we talking about uh, he goes on to say, "Me and Carlos clean, King, that um, he's on uh, talking about Sheree Whitfield. Uh, she's back. She's good for TV. He said he's looking for her, uh, you know, for her antics and what she's gonna bring to the show. And as we all know, we don't know what Sheree gonna really bring us because her boyfriend is not there. They don't cut off all the scenes, the likeness of him." The images, anything that can portray you to think about him has pretty much been washed. Like he never existed. So what pieces and parts she's going to play for us, I have no earthly idea other than being the bone collector. But again, we got Candy Birds for that. So I don't know. Maybe they're going to share duties. <laughs> she's going to show up one time and then he's going to show up one time. Hell, I don't know. Okay, but we look forward to it, but I'm sure... It ain't gonna hold a candle to what she could have brought to the show, meaning her boyfriend and telling us about the times he went through this, that, and the third in jail, and how you know, giving us a storyline like that and how they kept their relationship intact while he was away. But since we can't talk about it because he's non-existent, I don't know what she gonna bring. Maybe she gonna bring some things up on the other girls. Who knows? Okay. Um. Then he goes on to say, um, the the group that we do know as the Real Housewives cast for season 14 uh, resides as Marlo Hampton, Kenya Moore, Candy Burris, Drew Sedora, and Sanya Richards Ross. While we do not have the premiere date for the upcoming season, it looks as it will be a season filled with drama. And the Jasmine Brand exclusively reported last week, which was on the 20th. The co-stars Samuel Richard Shroud, 36, and actress Drew Sador, 36, are feuding. According to our sources, the two ladies are allegedly not getting along while filming, and they recently got into a very heated verbal altercation. Now, I know I was over at some of my YouTube uh, colleagues' show. I think his name is uh, Kim Pyre. And I think I heard it on uh, Tisa Tales. And it could have been also um, uh, House of Aaron. They were saying Drew Sedora was throwing dog treats at one of the friends of the show. Or it could have been Samuel Richards Ross for all I know. Okay. And I'm like. I'm like House of Aaron. That's a um, that's an offense. That's an assault charge, child. Remember when Nene? Well, that really ain't an assault charge because doggy treats don't hurt if they hit you, unless you threw it real hard and it might hit you in the eye or something. But uh, I can't really see. That's just like people throwing popcorn at you. You know, you should be eating the food instead of th uh, throwing it at people. When Kenya or Nene were throwing popcorn at each other or something to that degree. And, but I don't think nobody, not no human being, not at this time, unless we starving for everything, uh, as far as food stuff consumptions or uh, substance that we use. You know, I don't know. Maybe it might come a day we might be eating dog food. I don't know. Hopefully, I'm not living in that era. But, um, I don't know. It might be better than eating a human. You know what I'm saying? Cannibalism. But, that, that that's another discussion for another day. We got to be hitting real hard to be sitting up there eating cans of dog food. But, hey, they did it on good times. And they made it look real good like it was some good meatloaf. I know y'all used to look at the good times uh, with Florida Evans and... JJ <laughs> and James and they friend who was a instructor, a uh, voice instructor or whatnot. I don't forgot what the lady name was, but she's pretty. She reminded me of one of my auntie um, girlfriends. Um, but you know, very soul sister. You know, pro black woman doing her thing, very educated, and you know, she was just trying to substitute her income. Uh, so security check with some income uh, other income and they were trying to penalize her so she wasn't giving out no more lessons child and they found out well I think it was Michael had found out that uh, he didn't know um, uh, Florida still free and had a, a pet he said well she got something because she got all these dog cans and stuff like that so they just assumed she was eating dog food which she was you know and that's a bad state of events when we got grown elderly people eating dog food that's really inhumane that's why my dogs 
uh, my babies rather they ain't never ate well I ain't gonna lie when I first got my uh, puppy that recently passed away in October um was it yeah in October um I, we used to feed him dog food it was Caesar dog food I believe it was and uh um it is too expensive and then they kept having recalls and stuff so you know i was reading the bible one night and it was um in a passage where they were saying you know the dogs um eat the crumbs from the master table i'm not like you know what lord that's why right. why am i buying dog food why am i here doing that my food is what i eat they can consume too hell they breathe out they, they they bleed red when you they get cut they have allergies they had to go to the doctor to get shots uh the remain you know to remain their vitality and not to get diseases and stuff of that nature they got to take baths hey are they human too so from then on uh never fed them dog food anymore they just ate you know from what we we kept you know what we had been eating or cooked for the day so i said that to say this um you can say them dog treats because that's an ass whooping right there uh, Juice the door throwing doggy treats. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, girl, you if you ever throw a milk bone at me, don't let me get, don't let me catch you, don't let me catch you, girl, because I'm gonna have to get you, and I'm and I'm more than likely I'm gonna make you eat that dog treat because I'm still have it in my hand. Cause I'm be done caught it in me air when you tried to throw it at me, and when I get you, I'm gonna make sure you eat it. Okay, and that's all. That's it. That's all. I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna make her eat it now, but she'll be eating that dog treats. I mean, it might be some, but it might be, it might, it might be off camera, because, you know, like I told y'all, if you ain't seen my archives or the do's and don'ts of being a housewife, you can't sue. You can't sue on that show. That's a no-no, uh, but I'm sure you'll get perks or something extra on your paycheck and things of that nature, but it's it's, it's not, it's like a, a no-no, and they'll probably send you to anger management just to get the heat off their ass, it's meaning bravo, truly original, but that's in their contract, they can't sue nobody, mm-mm, because Candy definitely would have had a nice one, uh, and um, Kenya would have had a nice one on Miss Portia, and we never would have heard of her anymore, but we saw how that all worked out for the good, okay, all worked out for the good, um, but then, um, they were saying, the two ladies, um, then we had some situations with Marlo, Hampton, and Kenya Moore. They are also at odds, once again. And previously reported, the two ladies unfollowed each other on Instagram earlier this month. It is unclear what sparked this change and where the two started together, or started it, where the two stand at this point. Now... Uh, my whole thing about that, I really think it is a uh, scripted scene. I think they know Kenya and Marlo can bring the smoke, and they're gonna need it to be like the first, you know, good scene. First two episodes, you're gonna have to have some flight or fight type uh, mentality thinking uh, going on to get us interested in coming back. Because if it's a flop most people are not gonna come back for that second episode if it's good you got you you know you don't let you you don't let us bit the apple and it's kind of tasty so we're gonna come back to see what else you got in store for us but they're gonna need that first couple of episodes to hook us in but um that's pretty much what he said i, I don't want to go through the whole thing because it is quite boring uh, I don't understand why Carlos King keep putting his two cents in since he's not a player anymore over at the Bravo house and we really need to be getting other producers uh, the, uh, viewpoints and feedback on what's going on and what they can give us because we really need drama right now only thing we're looking at and that's a bad thing is paying attention to everything that's happening out there in the world which is Ovid and how it is running rampant uh, not just in Atlanta, it's everywhere, but, you know, we're like baby New York or becoming to be the new New York in L.A. Uh, with a lot of people chasing their dreams for stardom in the entertainment business. And we've had a, a lot of movie producers moving here and setting up shop and, you know, trying to have 
they set up something like Hollywood and it's bringing a lot of people down here to Atlanta chasing their dreams because usually it was going to New York where the concrete empire resides where they said if you can't if, if you can make it in New York you can make it anywhere if you can't make it in New York you ain't going nowhere um, and same thing with Hollywood um, a lot of people are moving here for better locations and they just ooh, they just making us too fit to be tired with all this damn traffic that's all I got to say about that I don't care what opportunities it may bring you but um, it's just too much too congested everything is just too trafficy out there you don't even want to be out there and it's making the real true Georgians you know go crazy in a sense you know what I'm saying because we used to being able to go and come how we please and not have so much congestion of traffic and people but that just seems to be the norm somebody don't put up there in the friendly skies come to Georgia Atlanta Georgia we got it all for you uh, and that's where they seem to be coming, believe it or not. But anyway, um, that's all I had for this video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. I'm getting better, um, stronger. I just had to get my voice kind of cleared up and get rid of this cough. And um, we'll see how things fare out for me. But I just really noticed that. Maybe y'all didn't notice it, but I noticed it, y'all. It seems like uh, this lady is looking more and more like Portia Williams every day and we're going to probably see more of that look going forward since she is on another season for the Real Housewives of Atlanta and Portia's not there for season 14 um, and don't know if she'll be back ain't really at all since she kind of resigned thinking she had a gold mine and Mr. Simon but that is still unfolding and developing daily so it she may not make it to the altar and they may throw her olive branch to bring her back but we do know one thing for sure and two things for certain she ain't gonna be on season 14 okay and i and don't look promising for her to be back on um damn i'm finna say the shade room <laughs> uh dish nation is what i was referring to but okay, guys, y'all get down in those comments. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts about this situation uh, of an article, of storyline. And uh, definitely when you hit that doorbell as telling me you're in the house, make sure that it's seen as a subscribe and like situation, okay? That it, I really would appreciate it. And share my videos as well. And as always, love you. Love you to pieces. And I will see y'all next video. Y'all be good to yourselves. Bye-bye.